Hello guys, this is the survey of Kenya. In today's video, I'll be showing you how to set up your high target GNSS. So we are going to be connecting our base and rover using the internal UHF mode. So what do we need for this job? We need the base, the receiver, a tri-brack, the poles, and a tripod stand. So let's get right into it. <laughs> The first thing we are going to do, we are going to set up our tripod. This is my tripod. I am going to set it on top of my tri tripod and make sure that it is level. There is this bubble here. I am going to level the bubble. So once our tripod and tri is set, we are going to open our base. So this is our base and we are going to insert the battery. And we are going to attach the antenna. It has two antennas. This is the network antenna, but you're going to use this one, the longer one. Once I attach the antenna, I can now power on my base. We are going to load this code because it is the one that we will use to connect our base to our controller. Once I have that, I am going to do the same to my rover. This is my rover. I am going to insert the battery. I'll also attach the antenna to the receiver or the rover. And yet again, I'm going to power on my rover. Please note this code because it is the one that you're going to use to connect our rover. It ends with 204. I'll also tap power on my controller. and my controller is powered on. Once I have that, I am going to take my base and put it on the tri -brack. So before you begin any setup, ensure that the red light on the satellite icon blink. The next thing that you are going to do, we are going to mount our rover or receiver to the poles. So ensure that the height of the rover of the pole, ensure that the height of the pole is at two meters and then attach the rover. We are now going to attach the controller bracket to our pole. And attach the controller to the controller bracket. I had already powered it on, but if you hadn't, you can power yours on. So this is the screen of our controller. There is this application known as High Survey Road. We are going to open it. Now we have this screen. 
we want to set up our new job. So we will go to project information. This is the name of the job. We are going to give it a new name. So we'll delete this and maybe we'll call it GNSS tutorial. Okay, skip. Now we want to set the coordinate system of the job that we intend to do. So we'll have to go to coordinate system. Cassini sold now. Nairobi is in zone that seven south. And the datum should be WGS 1984. Once I am satisfied that my datum and projection is correct, projection as Cassini sold now and, and the datum as WGS 1984, I'm going to save. Okay. You'll go back, and now we want to set up our device. We want to connect the base and the rover using UHF internal mode. So we'll go to device, device, connect. You remember there were numbers I showed you that you should note? For the base, it ends with 339. We are going to connect the base, which is 116-57-339. Okay, connect device, yes. You will go back and then select the base and then set. Base station is ready. Do you want to set rover now? We'll click no and go back to device. Disconnect the base, okay? Once it is disconnected, you are going to connect again. And the code for the rover or the receiver ends with 204, 116-55-57-204. This is the code for the rover. Connect, yes. I'll go back, select rover. Set. Note here it will say set successfully. Once you have that, your device has been connected, you'll go to survey, detail survey, ensure that the name that appears under detail survey is the current job that you're working on. And then ensure here it reads RTK fix. Once it is fixed, you can begin your job. Now this shows how to set up your machine on an averaged position. We have already set our machine at an averaged position. Now we want to localize our machine. Localizing means that we need our machine to be georeferenced to this point. Now, we will go and add the points that we have. We have three known points that you are going to use to localize. We are going to add those three known points to our machine. How do you do that? We'll go back, then go to project, then point library and then this will be our control point we'll go to control point and then add we are going to add our traverse point one traverse point two and traverse point three Now we have our traverse point one, traverse point two, traverse point three. We'll go to the traverses and add two of them as control point and check with the third one to see if it reads correctly. This is our traverse point one. We want to localize our machine at traverse point one. So you will hold your pole, ensure that it is level 
and then we will go to parametric calculations. Under project, we have parametric calculations. Click on parametric calculations. Now we want to add a source point. We'll go to add and then ensure that because we have our coordinates in nothing, easting, and we have our coordinates in NEZ, we're going to click NEZ. Once we have that, we are going to pick our source point. Now your machine is supposed to be at Traverse 1 and it is supposed to be level. Once it is level, you will click this icon and then click OK. Let it average to at least 10 points. Once you are certain that it has picked 10 points, click OK. Now this is our fourth point. For us to localize, we'll have to pick the local control point, which is the coordinate we fed for Traverse 1. So we'll go to control point. Remember, we fed our coordinates in the control point, and this is Traverse 1. We are going to select Traverse 1. Then you can confirm whether this Traverse 1 is the Traverse 1 you, in, you input, and then you'll click Save. Add success. Now we'll go to Traverse Point 2 and add it before we compute. We have moved from Traverse Point 1 and now we are at Traverse Point number 2. Now we are going to add Traverse Point number 2 as a control point. So we'll go back to the screen of parametric calculations. Now this is our parametric calculation screen and we are going to add our second control point. So click add. The process will be the same. Click on nothing, easting, height. And then now we are going to pick our source point. Ensure that the bubble on your pole is level. Then click on pick. OK. Average 10 points. It has picked 10 points, then we'll click OK. This is our source point. Our control point, this is Traverse Point 2, we are going to select it. Confirm that this local control point of Traverse 2 is the one you had theoretically. Then click Save. We have already added two control points, we are now going to Compute. Select Compute. Then apply. We are going to stake out our third point and check whether we can find it. So let's do that. We'll go to stake points and then we'll select stake, list, control point, then we'll stake point number three. Okay. It tells me to go southward six meters and westward it tells me to head 18 meters, 18.53. Now you'll use this uh, compass to find your point. Now I have found my traverse point number three. I'll check and confirm the accuracy of my point. As you can see, it says northward 0.004 centimeters, fluctuating at three, meaning that uh, the fed figure and the red figure has a disparity of three seconds, and eastward 0.029, the same disparity of three centimeters. Now we have successfully oriented our machine, and that is how you do it. Now I can successfully start to pick points in my control area, knowing that I have the coordinates of the point. That is how you localize your machine when you have set your base at an averaged position. Now, I can start a job and any coordinate that I'm going to pick of this area is going to be georeferenced. Thank you for watching this video and see you in the next one.